right, Daddy? A meal of fire. Amen. I want to show you something quickly in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. And then we'll talk about the communion quickly. Please, okay, the clock is there. Thank you, Jesus. But I know we have a very good timekeeper that can help us today. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9. I'll read from verse 28. Can they give me a little bit more audio? I've been preaching for the past three, four weeks. So I lost my voice in London. And last Sunday, I preached in two churches with, you know, but we thank God that God still moved. Amen. So we are blessed. This weekend, the voice seems to have come back. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9, verse 28 says, And it came to pass about... And eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. Jesus took Peter and John and James. We are the mathematicians. How many people? Plus, making four people who we are called to a prayer meeting, who we are called to a fire conference, who we are called to a history making occasion who were invited to be privy to things that angels have desired to peep into, who we are called to be part of classified information. Jesus decided to take these people along to come and partake of something that others were not privileged to partake in. So they went, the four of them, so we read that four people went up to the mountain to pray. But verse 29 now looks like there's a grammatical error. Because it says, and as he prayed. Uh-uh. Pastor, it should have been, and as they prayed. Hey, ask your neighbor. Are you here? Four people went up for one purpose. To pray. Now the Bible says, as he prayed. Uh -uh. We are the prayer warriors. What are the others doing? Jesus is praying alone. Pastor, on your own. I pray. Hallelujah. As he prayed, the others became spectators. All of a sudden, they were invited to be participants. They were invited to be history makers. They were invited to be change agents. They were invited to be people that will handle fire. But when they got to the mountain, only Jesus was praying. So look at the result. The Bible says, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance, now it's singular. The fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was white and glistening. Oh, Four people would have enjoyed this alteration. Four people would have enjoyed this amendment. I don't know if there's anybody like me who needs just a little adjustment here and there. A little alteration here and there. You know, there's some things that fit very well. There's some things you look at and say, well, I'm just managing this. It doesn't really fit. Beloved, this fire conference will deliver alteration. In the name of Jesus. Because you have been called out from your comfort zone. Some have driven miles and hours. Some have flown from different parts of the country. Some have left other things and they are here. And I believe God that you will not be a spectator, but you will be a participant. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the Bible says that the alteration came to only one person. The fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening and behold their talk with him he goes on and on things began to happen they appeared in glory and spoke and things happened then the bible says in verse 32 but peter and they that were with him were what they were what if they were just asleep it would be okay Heavy. Somebody just say heavy. Because it may not be sleep. Just heavy. They were heavy. They were heavy. 
tell your neighbor, neighbor, you need to drop some excess luggage in this conference. <laughs> hmm. Some things where, you know, the Bible says we should lay aside those things that easily beset us. Some people we are carrying excess luggage. You can't move far with excess luggage. The Bible says they were heavy with sleep. Some of us may not be heavy with sleep, but we may be heavy with other things. This communion tonight will address it. In the name of Jesus, I want you to clear your eyes again. Please just clear your eyes and say, Lord, <laughs> I am here to be a participant and not a spectator. Uh, to cut that long story short, the Bible says, and he came, okay, and but Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. <laughs> ah, if you go that way in this conference, no problem. But at the end of the conference, you will see my glory. You will hear my testimony. You will come and rejoice with me. I will send you invitation cards. Hallelujah. That is it. When they finally came out of their slumber, they saw the glory, but they were not part of the process. Beloved, they saw the glory, but they never smelt the story. They saw the glory, but they didn't know how it was manufactured. Ah, may that not be our portion. In the name of Jesus. How many people have the green mantle? Green, green, green wave. Pastor, please, maybe those I don't have because that precious man of God borrowed my own for a while and I promised him I will cut it. So if there's an extra one, maybe we can give it to him. Wave the green. Make up your mind you will have all the mantles. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Who is ready for alteration? Who is ready for that change? Who is ready for a new swag? Hallelujah. Who is ready for a new ginger? Turn to your neighbor again and say, neighbor, neighbor. look at me. I'm a partaker, not an observer. Hallelujah. All the places that fire came down, they were observers. Some were observers, like the 50 sons of the prophets. Is that not so? Why something was happening? Ah, please, let's go to, <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. And if I can have it projected for me, hallelujah. I want to read from the message Bible. Thank you, Lord. Revelation chapter 12. I find something strange in that scripture, in verse 7. Something strange and interesting. What does it say? Message Bible says, war broke out in heaven. Uh-oh. War. King James says, and there was war in heaven of all places. You will soon find out why. So war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought the dragon. That should have been the end of the story. But the Bible says the dragon and his angels fought back. What? The angels of God fought. The devil and his cohorts did what? They fought back. Back and forth. He will hit him, he will hit back. Even though they were no match because one third to, uh, to three thirds, no match. But they fought back. You know, I keep telling people that Satan has no respect. And that's why we need to understand the mysteries that deal with him. We need to understand the mysteries that God has empowered us with. We need to understand the power that has been handed over to us. Hallelujah. They fought back and forth. The dragon fought back. The Bible says, but they were no match for Michael. 
but they still fought. He knows his limits, but he will still keep attempting. The Bible says they were cleared out of heaven. Not a sign of them left. Can I hear King James? Can somebody just use the mic and read King James version for me? Verse 7. There was war in heaven, yes. Mm -hmm. And the dragon fought against the dragon. Mm-hmm. And prevailed not. Mm-hmm. Neither was there place found. Anyone in heaven. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, there will be no room for the enemy in your life. After this meal tonight, there will be no room left for the enemy and his buying and selling. In the name of Jesus. My sister, please read on. Cast out. That old serpent. Yes. That did the, what? Called the devil. Uh-huh. And Satan. Uh-huh. Which deceived the whole world. Deceiver of the whole world. Uh-huh. He was cast out into the earth. Uh-huh. And his angels were cast out with him. That's the problem. He was expelled from heaven. Where did he drop? You know, <laughs> we've seen churches rise and fall. And it's like most of the churches that collapsed. The problem started from the choir. Thank God for this beautiful choir. They are anointed. Amen. Most of the churches. Somebody said when Satan dropped out of heaven, he dropped into the choir. Because that's his ministry. Hallelujah. But if he's eyeing this choir, by the time this conference is over, and by the time this communion is over, there will be no room found for him. In the name of Jesus. So he was sent out of heaven and he dropped into the earth. So what are we going to do? Now, if you read on, you will find that the Bible gives us the secret of the victory in heaven. The Bible gives us the secret, the mystery that was used to flush out the devil and his cohorts. The Bible gives us the solution. If you ask me, that must have been the highest level of warfare. War in heaven. And I believe that whatever medication works against the devil in heaven, we definitely work against him here on earth. I believe that whatever the angels used, whatever the warriors used in heaven, that flushed out the devil and made sure there was no more room for him, that he had no space to return, That if we apply the same combination, if we apply the same prescription where he has dropped into, he will also have no room. And we saw an example when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt. Beloved, to cut a long story short, the Bible says, and they overcame him. By what? The blood of the lamb and the word. This translation says that this devil is the accuser of our brothers and sisters. He was thrown out who accused them day and night. I know that this communion will answer to every accusation hanging over anyone seated here in the name of Jesus. That any handwriting of ordinance that has been packaged against anyone right from the ancestry will be deleted tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says They defeated him, how? Through the blood of the lamb. Thank God that it's still available today. And the bold word of their witness. And the Bible tells us that the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And so that precious blood of the lamb and the word that was made flesh, the body of Christ that was broken for us, happens to be the best prescription to deal with any form of warfare, to deal with any assault of hell, to deal with any insurgency from hell, to deal with any form of incursion that came from the pit of darkness, to deal with any any interruption, interference, whatever Satan has packaged. The highest form of warfare was dealt with through the blood and the word. No wonder in John chapter 6, Jesus, after he had multiplied the loaves and the fishes and performed an awesome miracle, 
And they began to ask him some questions. He said something. If you read from verse 50 or so, he said something to them. He said, listen, I am the true manna that came from heaven. He told them, your fathers ate manna. You know what manna was? The food of angels. The food that angels ate. And we are told that they excel in strength. Can you imagine angelic power? That was their, 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 their diet. Manna was their diet. But Jesus said, yes, they ate manna. Men ate food of angels. And they eventually died. He said, but I am the true manna that when you eat me, you will never die. You will live. You will have life in you. Hallelujah. So, and then we are told that the children of Israel ate manna. Remember? When they said, oh, we want food, we want food, and God gave them manna, and they said, what is this? Remember? That they ate manna, and that manna they ate carried them through the wilderness, that they were not weak, nor was feeble. The only thing that killed them was rebellion and grumbling and murmuring. Don't worry, we'll deal with all that when we are ready to set up the fire again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So below, what are we talking about? This same mystery, you know, throughout scriptures, you see types and shadows. You see signs. And in the Old Testament, you keep hearing, it shall come to pass, it shall come to pass. In the New Testament, you keep hearing, and it came to pass. Thank God that we are in the new dispensation. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we see God just showing signs of this power. Imagine when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, that God told them to just take the, the, the blood of animal and sprinkle on their doorposts. And that singular action was enough to protect them against the angel of death. So what are we saying? The angel of death was sent by who? By the devil? No. It was God. Permission from God. Sent from God. Is that not so? To go and destroy. But guess what? Everywhere that angel saw the blood, he would just say, Bow. Angel with permission from God. So God's agent bowed at the sight of the blood. Let me ask you a question. Which cohort of hell will see the blood of Jesus and attempt to enter? If the one sent by God saw the blood of animal and bowed, do you understand what God has given us? If the enemy has his way, he will stop communion in churches. Because there's power in it. I wish I could give you testimonies. Pastor, in one of the parishes in London, the Lord told me to share on John chapter 2, which was, uh, the title of the message was, They Wanted Wine. And after sharing, I just said, okay, can the angels go into the congregation now and distribute the new wine? A lady had been bleeding for three years after she had a CS. Three good years, young lady. She said, the next thing she saw was that an, something just fell on her and she fell on the floor. And as she was lying on the floor, please let me know, okay. As she was lying on the floor, she saw one tall angel and that angel put a glass of wine. You know what that wine is. You know it's not ordinary wine, you know. It's the same thing we are drinking tonight. Amen. Put it on her lips and said, drink. She drank it. That was Friday, women's program. She got back home. No more bleeding. She said she would keep quiet. Saturday, she came for Saturday meeting. No bleeding. Sunday, she came back to church. No bleeding. She said, no, I have to testify. He that is from above is above all. There is blood that is superior to blood. There is wine that is superior to wine. There is power that is superior to power. That's why I said, let all powers be what? Subject to the higher authorities. I want you to know that this combination tonight that settled heaven and brought peace in heaven and sealed every angle so that there was no more room for Satan and his cohorts. As it worked in heaven, so will it work here on earth. As it worked in heaven, so will it work in your workplace, in your finances, in your marriage, 
in your family, in the home office, in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus prayed a prayer. He taught us, he said, when you pray, say, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. So when the sons of the prophet brought that poisonous vegetable and dropped it in the pot of soup, and they tasted it and screamed, man of God, there is death in the pot. The Bible says, Elisha said, just get me a meal. Beloved, that meal is here. That meal is still alive. That meal is still working. Once that meal is introduced in the pot, every poison, every poison is neutralized. Every activity of hell is checkmated. Every insult, assault, program from hell is permanently deleted. Are you ready for that meal? They couldn't understand Jesus when he said, my flesh is meat indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. He said, if you drink my blood and you eat my flesh, you will have life. They said, what? We can't bear this anymore. And many of them decided not to follow him. Can I call on our dear daddy to come and help us so that we can eat this food? You can take this prescription. Beloved, when you take this prescription, don't look at it as uh, they say we are doing Holy Communion. Let there be a testimony after this communion tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you. Great. Shall we just bow down our heads? We have come to the mechanic workshop. It is only common sense for you to get to the mechanic workshop and you are telling the mechanic the fault of another man's car. <laughs> where the pool of Bethesda, where everyone minds their own businesses. Who are you? Who are you? Someone introduced himself, I am a man of sorrow. Another one introduced himself, I am poor, I am not known. My family is the poorest, is the most unknown in Manasseh. Another one introduced herself. She said, Lord, I have nothing. I have nothing save a little pot of oil. I want you to be real before God. You can lie to any man every time. But you cannot lie to God. He made you and he knows you. I want you to be plain before God. Ask for forgiveness. If we say we have no sins, we lie and there is no truth in us. I want you to be real tonight. I want you to be real tonight. I think the, the reality of God in your life that we open the way. We are before the consuming fire. We are before the God that answers by fire. We are before the Lord that commands by fire. We are before the Lord that is called the refiner's fire. Something is about to happen and it must happen.